What's up, guys? Nick Major here, APTV correspondent out here at the Troubadour in Hollywood, California. I just chatted with Travis of We The Kings about the 10-year anniversary of their self-titled debut album, their future plans, and a lot more. So stay tuned to see what he had to say. Run, baby, run. <laughs> Known as the baby bird. Oh, God bless you. Bless you, cutie. God bless you. Are you dancing? <laughs> She's got Converse on. What up, girl? Good How are we doing? Oh, high five. I'm, I might have to go take her to mama real quick. This yeah, you want to do that real quick? Yeah, this might be uh, part one of part two. Yeah, we'll be right back. We will. Yeah, uh, commercial break. <laughs> Oh, and we're back. we're back. It's like nothing uh, happened at all, except for I there's... I hope you enjoyed those 30 minutes of commercials. <laughs> there's no baby, uh, and it's much cooler in here, so it's actually even a better time to get started. It's a win-win for, for everybody. Yeah, it was, uh, it's good. I should take a moment to, to apologize uh, to all three of the cameras. Hey, guys. Uh, and to you. Um, it's, it's tough being a dad. I'm being on the road. You want to spend so much time with them that you want to include them in everything. <laughs> everything. But sometimes uh, they get a little irritated you know no. you can't blame them no worries they're just babies of the success of the first album wasn't so significant do you imagine that you guys would have attempted anything different as a band musically i don't know that's that's actually a really like interesting question because it's it's one of those what, what if ifs. this happened we, you know where would you would we be much bigger would we be you know working at side jobs and not be in a band you know like you never really know um what i can say is that after after we finished the first album, there was uh, there was ten songs. Um, at the record that's self-titled is eleven songs. Um, I like at the very last minute, I was like, "There's a song that I wrote in the hotel room. Um, I really want to put it on the album." They were like, "No, no, 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 no." I was like, "Please, please, it's really good." And they're like, "No, no, 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 no. There's not enough time. Your album comes out in like a month, and we can't just you know put sl slap on a song. Like there's politics to it." I was like, "Okay, fine." And I got stubborn. I was like, no, it's got to go on this record. It's got to mm -hmm. go. Um, and uh, they were like, do you have a title for it? I was like, no, but I'll, I'll just record it. I'll, I'll change the title later. And uh, it was Check It's Juliet. Um, and so it's hard to, I think about that question that you asked a lot because, you know, what if that, that song, song wasn't, wasn't on, on the it. record? You know, and, and I think the record is really great. And a lot of people would say that Skyway Avenue is their favorite, or All Again For You, or Secret Valentine. So there's other, you know, cuts from that record that um, that stand out to people outside of, you know, Check Yes Juliet. So I think, I think as the progression musically has gone for the band, we've always, we've never put out the same record twice. So it's almost as if we were striving for something different every time. Um, we've never put out like a Check Yes 2.0. We've never put out, you know, nothing has ever sounded uh, similar mm -hmm. to to uh, what we've released before, and, and the same can be said about Smile Kit, our second record. Nothing really sounds like that that we've put out. Uh, third record, Sunshine State of Mind. Nothing really sounds like that. Fourth record, Somewhere Somehow. Nothing sounds like that. So far, so on. Strange Love just came out, and you know, it's all our albums start with S. That's another fun, oh, fun topic. Very yeah. true. And self titled is actually so when people title their album self titled, that means for us it would be We the Kings. Ours is actually titled self titled. That's the S. That's the that's the S, and that's we thought it was funny. So even our like acoustic EPs, everything. So it's it started with uh, self titled, Smile Kid, Secret Valentine EP, uh, Sunshine State of Mind, Somewhere Somehow, Stripped, which was like all acoustic, um, and then our. We, we wanted to put out kind of like a greatest hits because it's tough when you have like five albums, like which songs you play. If you play three songs from every album, that's 15 songs. It's a really Still long a set. a lot of songs. Um, <laughs> and we want, we want to touch on, you know, on, on every album's, you know, favorite songs from the fans perspective, but it's just tough. So we decided to put kind of like a greatest hits, but I didn't want to call it greatest hits because that always kind of signifies that the band's like over, you know, and that we're done. Uh, so we called it So Far, and that has an S. And then we decided when we do, you know, hopefully if we're fortunate enough to have a greatest hits, we're just going to spell it backwards because hits ends with an S. <laughs> How would you even pronounce that? Stays. I wouldn't even try. <laughs> oh, my God. Especially if it was, like, huge for, like, radio. I'd be like, from their newest album. Stay strong and uh, yeah, Exactly. <laughs> Wait, what? What's the significance behind the S? Uh, there, I don't think there is a significance other than um, we were always fans of not necessarily what do they call them like uh like the records that are um 
like it, the whole album is like an idea concept records oh yeah, yeah. conceptual uh, I, I thought that was always kind of like a cool idea just to have everything be i think armor for sleep was like one of the first concept albums that i had picked up maybe coheed and cambria but they um I, I thought that idea was awesome so when we started it we just at first it was just like hey self-titled we should just actually call it self-titled because that would just be a fun story for the mm-hmm. fans and then it just kind of went from there. A second one was Smile Kid. Just you know, then once on. you start that motivation, that snowball, you can't just like break <laughs> you it off. Back down then people are like, "Well, what's so special about this record that you didn't start it with an S?" We're like, uh, "I don't know." So <laughs> we never want to have to answer that question. <laughs> so back to what you were kind of saying about the fact that every album is something fresh and new from you guys. It almost makes me wonder, like, if you hadn't put Check Yes Juliet on it, and if you had put that on the next CD, if that would have shaped the next album to be more similar oh, to the I wonder. self-titled album. Yeah, probably. I mean, there are songs that that I've written that haven't, uh, not necessarily, I don't want to say like made the album, but I'm very uh, specific with the songs that I write and I really want, I want to feel confident about them mm-hmm. before, you know, they're released to the public. It's, you know, the subject content is about my life and it's, you know, it's personal and I really want it to be right. So sometimes I can get like a little nitpicky, but there have been a lot of songs uh, over the years that have never come out that sound like that specific record but if they were to come out now we would probably change it a little bit musically mm-hmm. so that it would sound whatever we were going for at the time um but yeah it, you know it's it's tough to think about like what if you know those things didn't happen i'm happy that they did i am so far and beyond uh what i dreamed of being able to accomplish um and a lot of that is you know because of check yes julia you know starting it off but I think the real reason that we're able to be a band for so much longer is because, you know, the, these fans that have come out. And is doing this 10-year anniversary tour allowing you guys to revisit some songs from that album that you haven't played live in yes. some time? Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, ever. Ever. Yeah, yeah. This is the first time uh, that we've played. Okay, let's see. There's a song called Headlines Read Out and a song called The Quiet. And those are the two of the 11 that we just never played. Um, because we, d- we didn't really have enough time. It used to be, like, we never headlined, you know, when we were just starting out. It was always, we were opening, so they were like, here, you get 25 or 30 minutes. The album itself is like 37 minutes, so even if we didn't even introduce ourselves or say a single word in between any of the songs, we wouldn't even have time to, you know, finish the entire set. So there were those were the two, for whatever reason, that we just didn't play. And they're fun to play live. You know, and then the, it's fun to see the fans kind of react to it, because not having played it before you really don't know what to expect Mm -hmm. apart from all the singles that you guys have had one song that kind of took off in its own single that was never technically released as one of the sad song yeah that's crazy and you guys just did a really good remix of that one so what inspired the remix you you brought in some new girl vocals to put on it you put Mm -hmm. olivia holt on it i think uh with the way that that music has kind of changed a little bit with uh the electronic vibe um kind of taking over a little bit and I, I, I should probably start by saying, like, I like electronic music. I think it's really, really cool. Um, there's some people in our band that are like, it's just laptops. And I'm just like, well, it's a little more. <laughs> um, but I, I always liked the idea. That they, there was a, a couple DJs and producers that were doing bootleg remixes of our stuff, and they would just put them up on YouTube. And I would listen to them, and I'd be like, "That's good. Yeah, this is dope. This is awesome. <laughs> uh, thank you. Or can I share this or whatever? Um, and it's different when you ask somebody, you're like, hey, here's the stems. You can really make something of this. And the first time that we did it was a song called The Story of Tonight. Um, then we did uh, a song called Just Keep Breathing. And then we did the remix for Sad Song. And because, I'll tell you why we, we changed the, the vocalist. Um, Elena Coates, who sings on the ballad, um, has just a phenomenal voice. She's just awesome in so many ways. And that song is very special to a lot of people. And we didn't want to... We wanted the remix to be completely different. You know, we didn't want people to even compare the two, if that if that's possible. Yeah, because they're different um, songs almost. They, they are, you know, and it, and had it not been for the same exact lyric, obviously they are the same song, but um, had it not been for the lyric, you could, you know, make a case for that they are two completely different songs. Um, and so we asked Olivia, who we found out was a fan of the band, and I actually love her voice, and she had just released uh, a single called History, and it was, I was like, hey, that's really good. It came up on my Spotify feed, and I was like, let me just hit her up and ask her. I think I, like, tweeted her. I was like, hey, I want to sing on a song, and then it just kind of organically happened from that. Mm -hmm. And I saw, in Salt Lake City, you actually brought... uh, Elena was there. Yeah, you brought Elena out to do the vocals. uh, She lives in Boise, Idaho, or or, uh, somewhere in Idaho. 
I think it's by Boise, but she drove down to Salt Lake City uh, just because she wanted to, you know, hang out, and it was awesome. I was just like, hey, if you're going to be here, you might as well sing it. Mm -hmm. Did she hear the new version? She had heard the new version, yeah, yeah, Um, and that's the one that we do live, so it was cool for her to kind of be a part of that. Yeah, yeah. So that that is one show that happened where I don't know if anybody will ever hear that version, you know, with the remix with Elena's voice. Oh, that's cool. cool. Yeah, yeah. So that worked out awesome. And it did. It did. Uh, you guys have kind of been teasing a new announcement that was going to be coming, and you announced it today, which was that you guys are going to be starting this podcast thing called Encore. Yes. Uh, what, what, what inspired this? What can we expect from that? I don't know what inspired it, but what you can expect from it. We, we've done four episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I, there's really no way to put it. It's literally us in a back lounge uh, uh, of our tour bus, and it's completely uncensored. So once we start tracking, we don't stop until we say, you know, good night. Thanks for listening. Whatever it was. Um, (laughs) There has been potential blackmail already. Um, (laughs) And we, I think we've always kind of had like this open and honest kind of outlook on, on, or at least, you know, the way that we perceive ourselves, we would hope that people can look at us and be like, you know, whether it's right or wrong, they're being honest. Um, and that's how we are personally, you know, in our own personal lives with whether it's family or friends, we just, you know, kind of enjoy the idea of being honest because honest is kind of like our honesty is kind of a a rare, you know, trait now, unfortunately, Mm -hmm. I I wish it wasn't that way, but, um, that is what you can expect. It's just pure uncut honesty. And, uh, and it's funny. It's, It's stories from our past. It's, uh, You know, we talked about, you know, our bass player, Charles, just got married. Um, We talked about things from the wedding that, you know, people don't get. You know, it's like essentially, I guess, what inspired it maybe is, you know, what happens when we walk off stage? What happens when the cameras are off? Um, You know, we do have our private time, but at the same time, it's like it would be I would love to know that about our favorite bands. So if we are somebody's favorite band, I think it's just a really cool, you know, idea that they can just get more you know if if the show and youtube vlogs and music videos if that wasn't enough then this is you know an additional an additional additional little uh little treat and those are dropping is it the 23rd those start to come out i think so yeah yeah so what's coming up next for you guys after this after this tour we are definitely going to release new music in 2017 nice um and i'm biased but it's it's awesome uh, the best stuff you've ever written. Yeah, I can well, tell that's what you want to say. I've I've uh, I've been writing with Avril Lavigne um, oh, the amazing. past year, and uh, for her record, and she's such a talented writer. And you learn stuff when you write with other people. And mm-hmm. um, I wrote with uh, Chad Kroger from you know Nickelback, oh, wow. uh, and he helped produce some stuff that we did for Avril. And it's just when you're in a room, regardless of whether you uh, know their their music or not just seeing everybody's different perspective of how they write a song is, is awesome. You know, it's, that's, that's your trade craft. That's like your, your artist, your art is just to, to, to put together this song. And it was just, I think it's maybe the best thing is to be around all those different people. Well, go see the family, man. I I look forward to the set tonight. Some of my favorite songs off that album. I appreciate it. A pleasure chatting.